This is Bridget. Terry and I will be starting research and interviews for the 14th season of this podcast. Since so many people are not only working from or sheltering at home these days and may be experiencing prolonged periods of stress, anxiety, or depression for the first time, we are reposting two episodes about how to get work and other tasks done when you're struggling mentally. We invite you to come and join us on the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook page. There are daily posts, information, and support. It's another way that we can all stay connected while social distancing. You are not alone. Hello, and welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with Mental Health America of Wisconsin. We're your co-hosts, Bridget and Terry. Each week, through intimate, candid conversations with guests, we explore different perspectives on and experiences of depression. We keep it real because the illness is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. We are not experts or therapists. We are sisters and best friends who live with depression and have learned that hearing others speak openly and without shame makes it easier to believe depression is a common and treatable illness, not a personal failing. You are far from alone. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Terry. In a recent Forbes magazine article on the cost of ignoring mental health in the workplace, it notes that depression is thought to count for up to 400 million lost work days annually. And another source, the American Psychiatric Association's Center for Workplace Mental Health, says depression contributes to presenteeism, which is a new word for me, or employees at work but not engaged, and absenteeism, which we have heard of, or employees missing days of work, which you just referenced. It may also adversely impact multiple areas of employee performance, including focus and decision-making, time management, completing physical tasks, social interactions, and communication. Like most other health conditions, early detection and effective treatment lessen the severity and impact of the condition. Last week, we began a discussion with writer Sarah Fielding, whose article, Nine Ways to Motivate Yourself to Work When You're Struggling Mentally, on the website Healthline, caught our attention. Today, we'll continue that discussion. While practical tips to start and keep working can benefit anyone... Those of us with depression and anxiety may need to jumpstart ourselves a little more often. We'll link to Sarah's article with this episode, but I want to do a quick review of the first four techniques from last week. Mm -hmm. They were plan out your entire day to provide structure. Write a list of what you need to do to get it all out of your head and on paper. Mm. Break everything into small, more doable steps and allow yourself a sense of accomplishment as you cross off and complete those tasks. And fourth, check in with yourself regularly and often to determine if you're hungry, thirsty, need a quick walk or change of scenery. In other words, take care of yourself. (laughs) Do what you got to do to stay focused and on task. Here again is Sarah Fielding giving her voice to depression. We resume the list at number five. Do a review of your progress. I think that reviewing your progress and celebrating what you have gotten done is such an important thing for each person because obviously it's our job and we should be getting these things done, but also why not celebrate that you're doing a good job and that you're able to push through and that you're motivated at a certain time? Why not take extra time to celebrate yourself? And it can be just a pat on the back. We're not talking about popping a champagne bottle or anything. Exactly. Just taking literally two seconds to be like, okay, I've gotten this done. That's great. What's next? That's all you need to do. But just taking that moment to acknowledge that can make such a difference mentally. And you use the word capable, which I really like because it's really easy to fall into the trap of believing that we are no longer capable when we're depressed. So many people struggle with depression. You're not alone in this. And you may not know that that person who looks really busy next to you is deep in a depressive episode and is feeling like they can't cope with it or just outwardly express what they need. And you just never know what other people are going through. And 
they might not know what you're going through and just taking the time to realize that you need to look out for yourself and acknowledge what you need in that moment is so important. In her article, Sarah adds, knowing how capable you are provides a sense that you can take on things which may have appeared daunting or even impossible before. Her next suggestion is to take five. Obviously, there are days where you're just going to feel like you don't have a moment for breath. That's okay. That happens to everyone. But if you have just literally five minutes to just stretch your arms at your desk, get a drink of water, get some fresh air, it's just that five-minute refresh where you're not, don't think in that five minutes, okay, I should be doing this, I should be doing this right now, why am I taking these five minutes? If you're going to do it, you need to give yourself five minutes free from this pressure of work and just let your brain just relax for a moment. Like you said, sometimes when you're just allowing your brain to relax is when the best ideas and thoughts come to you. So I think just giving yourself that five-minute refresh is such a great way to refocus and be productive for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's hardly wasted time, right? It's a it's a reset. Every you know, the computer has to do its update. You know, maybe we do too every now and then to just be able to work at our best. Exactly. No, I think that's such a good point. That anytime we feel like we're not working during the day, it feels like it's wasted time when in reality you're wasting time more so if you're just pushing through too hard and then not working to the best of your ability. But if you take literally just five minutes and allow yourself that small refresh, it can make you use the rest of your time so much better versus just trying to push through instead. So I think in reality, it's the opposite of wasted time. This next tip might be a love-hate thing. Neither Bridget nor I, for example, can read or write with music on, especially if there are lyrics. It's just too distracting. But Sarah swears by it. Her seventh tip is to create a motivating work playlist. For those of you who don't know what that word means, it is a curated selection of songs you like. For me, it works really well that I have a specific playlist that I always listen to when I'm writing. I don't know if it's a placebo or what, but training my brain that when that is playing, I am writing. I'm not emailing, I'm not invoicing, I'm not doing anything. If this music is playing, that's when I'm writing. That might not work for everyone, but for me, it really just helps me get in the zone. It's a great association thing. And I think of a playlist for working out and I like the sort of twist on it that it's a playlist for working. I also just think it just makes it more enjoyable. It shouldn't be music that you're going to like sing out loud to. Of course, that won't motivate you, but if it's just nice music you enjoy listening to, it kind of fades into the background. That's just the perfect mix of having something enjoyable while doing the work you need to get done. So the term garbage in, garbage out is usually used in the context of computer software. And it means that regardless of how good the program is, the results are going to be incorrect if the input is invalid. But that is the phrase that kept coming to mind as Sarah talked about the need to be mindful of what we eat and drink and how both can affect us. For many people, caffeine is a great way to get started in the morning, and it can be helpful, but at the same time, it's important to acknowledge when you're over-caffeinating, it can make you more jittery, not be able to focus as well, and also just different things like making sure that you're getting enough protein and different foods that will keep you going versus make you crash. We all know that with simple sugars, it's going to give you that quick boost, and then you're just going to completely crash onto your desk in a hot minute, so... I think just really looking at those things, getting some veggies, getting some grains. I, You know when you eat something and your body reacts and feels energetic and you know when it crashes. You're When you really look at what you're eating, I think everyone knows what helps and what doesn't. And just being aware of that will help you get through the day better. And you say not just what you're eating, but what you're wearing. And this surprised me because, of course, working at home, we could be in our pajamas. But that's not the best move. I just know that if I wear something that I had a really great day in before or just makes me feel confident or just happy to wear, that's just going to change it because I'm going to keep looking down or in a mirror and just see myself in that. It's just going to, that's something that really helps my mood and makes, reminds me that I'm much more than this depressive episode or anxiety. I am still a fully functioning, great employee, human, and 
I'm just able to keep going. And I think that if I just throw on whatever and just feel like, feel like I look blah, it'll just continue to feed the feeling inside of blah and just not good. I w- reflecting back would have to admit that, you know, my longest and worst <laughs> depressive episode, which led to this whole p- project. Um, I, I just thought, what the hell difference does it make? But it may in fact have made a difference. Exactly. It, it's just about realizing what you need. And it's not about trying to hide the fact that you're having a bad day by dressing better. And it's not even necessarily about dressing like so great. It's just about putting on something that makes you personally feel good. And like you're able to take on the day a little bit more than you felt originally. And we know we've got listeners who, you know, will hear this and think, are you kidding me? I can't even get out of bed. Yeah, no, there are going to be days where you just say, screw it. And you're just not going to want to or and that's a like again you're human like we have bad days we have bad times we're it's okay I just think we're societally in this mindset of that we're not allowed to show that we're doing badly we have to power through the only way to be productive is to be productive all the time and just to show any weakness is wrong and that's just not true taking mental health days when you can acknowledging how you feel the more you fight it the more you're going to burn out and just feel worse it's about realizing what you can do in your situation and doing the best you can for you in that moment versus trying to fight it continuously and hide it great practical reminder sarah thank you thank you absolutely the idea of pushing and being productive every minute there are just times You can save yourself hours by taking five minutes. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I just want to mention that we were honored this past week by Feedspot, and we were ranked number one, the top depression podcast, and put on their must-follow list. Which is, is an honor, and it's just nice to get any help getting the word out because, again, we both know where we've been and we both know where we are, and if we could have heard people um, on this side of that line... Um, tell us that there was at his side, that would have been really helpful. Yes, it certainly would have. And if anyone who's listening to this is willing to share it with anyone in their life that they care about, um, it has a ripple effect and we'd certainly appreciate it. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate your experience of depression, or better understand how to support someone else's. We invite you to join us for daily posts on the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook page and on Twitter and Instagram at Voice Depression. It is a comfort to be among fellow travelers on Depression's Dark Road. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up. If someone else is, listen up.